KPLA 3 News. It's election night in California. And welcome back to our Commitment 2022 coverage of the midterm elections. We are following, of course, the race for U.S. Senate and the House, statewide races, local races. And we're going to start with some numbers now for U.S. Senate here in California. Yeah, we can show you right now, and this is pretty much how it's been trending all night long with 31% reporting. Uh, you can see that the incumbent Alex Padilla is uh, winning handily right now uh, over his Republican challenger, Mark Moiser. This is actually two votes uh, having to be cast for uh, this Senate seat, one to fill the seat until next year, and then one to then start the new term, the six-year term, and Alex Padilla is uh, winning by the same percentage margin in both of those races. As you would expect, consistent votes from the Voters. <laughs> All right, let's go now to the state controllers race. This is one that people have really been watching. It was the Republicans' best chance mm -hmm. uh, to take a statewide seat the first time it, it would have been since 2006. But at this point, we know that Malia Cohen, the Democrat, has declared victory in this race. So we don't know if Lonnie Chen has uh, conceded, but we know that the that the Democrat in this race has claimed victory. All right, we can show you the uh, governor's race and not really uh, any surprise here uh, at all. You can see uh, Governor Newsom will go on to a new term as governor of California and the spread about what we've been seeing in recent polling and uh, the governor giving a victory speech and also uh, kind of uh, pushing back on some other governors in the United States. Uh, Brian Dolly uh, giving his concession speech, a heartfelt speech uh, uh, where he thanked his supporters and his family. So Lizay Mitri has been covering the governor tonight for us. And Lizay is uh, at the Citizen Hotel on J Street in downtown Sacramento. An interesting night for the governor and a very positive one for him, not only declaring victory in his own reelection campaign, but also Proposition 1, which would uh, basically protect abortion rights in our state constitution. Right, and we are here at an election night watch party for Prop 1, where he chose to make his uh, re-election victory speech tonight. And you can see this looks and sounds nothing like it did even an hour ago. It's kind of wrapping up, it looks like, uh, after they got some promising results pretty early for what people here were most concerned about, like you mentioned, Prop 1 and the governor's race. And the governor was a big proponent of Proposition 1, and that is mainly what his victory speech focused on tonight. He referred to deep polarization in the country and what California is doing in contrast to some other states that he says may be banning books or banning abortion. Here's what he said. Here we are in California moving in a completely different direction. That's a deep point of pride. And it's with that passion uh, that I bring to this second term uh, a resolve to do more uh, to advance that cause of freedom. And after that speech uh, with his wife and children here, the governor made an exit through the side door there and did not take any questions tonight. Live in Sacramento, Lizay Mitri, KCRA 3 News. Lizay, thank you. And for people interested in Prop 1 right now, it is winning by a margin of 68 to 31. All right, let's go down the street from where Lizay is. And Brittany Hope standing by at the Brian Dolly headquarters at the Kempton Hotel. And uh, there was a time where he was giving his concession speech. And uh, it was a heartfelt speech where he thanked his family and his supporters. Right, and, and I do want to make it clear, you know, we just spoke with Dolly one-on-one -on -one before coming on camera, and he made it clear, he said he is not conceding at this point. He said there are still a lot of votes that need to be counted, a lot of ballots that are still getting processed. So at this point, he is not conceding. In fact, he says he's going to spend the next few days with his family here in Sacramento watching as those come in. So this is not the end of the road for him. But look at this right now. This is really just the perfect image for you to get a vibe and to get the energy of of what that speech was that he just gave here to his crowd of supporters and to his campaign. He was incredibly emotional, thanking his son for running his campaign. Incredibly emotional, thanking his other son, who's only 22 years old, for taking over the family farm while he's been gone. And thanking his 13-year-old daughter, who's been here in Sacramento going to school while dad, you know, he said, hasn't really been home for the past 70 days. You can see right next to him on his right, wearing the purple, that is his wife, Megan Dolly, as well. Hey, you know, both of them are are still working in Congress right now. We did ask him what's next for him. Take a listen. 
if you know God gives me the opportunity to do something, I'll do it. Just like this opportunity came, and and um, I stepped into it. I stuck to my principles this whole race and who I am. I didn't change. You know, people were like said during the campaign, you have to do something really, you know, elaborate or something to get people to know you. And it's just not who I am. I'm a guy that works hard every day. And back out here live again, you can see that family, that large family and supporters who are still with him. He is still with them tonight. You know, we also did ask him at this point, Governor Newsom, of course, the, it's projected that he's going to have this second term and the governor is saying, hey, I'm not going to run for president. But we know that's on a lot of people's minds. So we did ask Senator Dolly tonight, you know, if that happens, would you consider a run for governor? And hey, almost the same answer that you just heard from. He said, if I feel like I need to step up and God calls me to do this, I will will do it. So you can see him out here tonight, still optimistic, of course, emotional and thankful to his family and supporters. He also said to folks working across the aisle, he wants to continue to do that. And that is something that really in Sacramento, he has been known to do. And for the past 26 years, whether it's on the board of supervisors or working in the legislature, he has been known to be a kind man. And that was really the campaign that he ran. And you can see that not only with the speech he gave here, but with the folks in the crowd. But again, at this point, he's saying, although there's a pretty big gap, the votes are still coming in and he is not conceding. We're live in Sacramento. Brittany Hope, KCRA 3 News. Yeah, a very dignified campaign, Brittany. Thank you. And Brittany mentioned his family. His wife, Megan, mm -hmm. is a state assembly woman. She won another term tonight, it appears. And uh, he has another two years as a state senator. As a state senator, Governor Gavin Newsom has committed to serving all four years as governor. And really, I think the story tonight has sort of become how heavy his endorsement has played in a lot of these races. Proposition 1, we saw uh, clearly has passed by a landslide. We're waiting on how Proposition 30 shakes out. That's the wealth tax on millionaires to help with clean air initiatives across California. And also in, you know, one of our local races, State Senate District 8, with uh, his endorsement of Angelique Ashby versus Dave Jones. Uh, so just seeing how uh, the governor's endorsement shakes out all these races. Glad you brought that up because we know many of our viewers are watching that yes. one very closely. Mm -hmm. So we have talked to both candidates and we will be bringing you that coverage shortly. First, though, we're going to go to Stockton right now as we get the latest here on uh, House District 9. Uh, the race there, Josh Harder with a sizable lead with 30% reporting over his opponent, Republican Tom Patty. Orko Mana standing by with the Patty campaign and Tom Patty himself. That's right, Gulfston. Yeah, Tom Patty is here with supporters at his side. Joining me right now is Supervisor Patty. Thanks for being with us tonight. As we, yeah, as we see the results start to come in, how are you feeling right now? Listen, I'm excited about wherever we're going. We've got a lot of grassroots. We've got a lot of local supporters. And I'm proud of the effort we put forward with all the resources we had, the amount of uh, the the volunteers and the local population that got behind me that knows what I've done for the community. I'm excited about where we are. And we were speaking to Congressman Harder earlier. Uh, you said here, you know, it's not over yet. So as we wait for more results to come in, what are you hoping to see? Well, there's certainly going to be a trend. So we, we know where we are, and we start to see a trend as it closed. And we see races change, not only within hours, but within days. So really, where we are today and where we are in three days or five days or seven days, I know for a fact that a lot of the Republican organizations were telling everybody, sit on your ballot, vote the day of. So we're really not reading a lot into where we are now. It's a very preliminary um, indication, but where's the trend going to go? And we'll pay attention to that. And we've been talking a lot about certain races in California, this one being one of them, very important in terms of the balance of power in Washington. How are you feeling about how important this race is and, and the turnout that you've seen in the county? Well, this county had an opportunity to be did redistricting, and I'm the only person from this county actually running to be the representative. So we had a very well financed, for whatever reason, Nancy Pelosi moved Josh Harder over here. Initially, he declared he was running in 13, and then he all of a sudden decided number nine. So, I mean, do the people want a Bay Area representative that's progressive, or do they want somebody with grassroots from here? And that's what the election's about. It's unfortunate that my opponent 
ran a campaign of based on 100% lies, and that really is unfortunate because every single thing that he presented about me was false, but that's a campaign strategy to try to get traction against somebody that's local. I'm proud of my record as a county supervisor. I'm proud of my history as a business owner, as a baseball coach, as a father, as a member of this community, working with multiple nonprofits for decades now. So if that carries the day, fantastic. My work continues tomorrow right here in San Joaquin County. Supervisor Patty, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Great to be here. Thank you. And as we were talking about, this race, Congressional District 9, is one of those key races that could determine whether or not the Democrats retain control of Congress. We spoke to Congressman Harder a little bit earlier at his campaign headquarters about the importance of this race. This race has enormous local significance, but it also has a lot of national importance. Uh, I think every vote that's been taken over the last year or two has been done on fairly party line votes, most of those. Uh, if you look at uh, our effort to cap the price of insulin, which is incredibly important in this district, every single Democrat in Congress voted for that bill, every single Republican voted against it. And in an area where 50% of our community is diabetic or pre-diabetic, that includes a lot of folks. And that bill passed with three or four Democrats because that's the entire margin in the entire nation. And so it's important to make sure that even as we're fighting for San Joaquin County, even as we're fighting for the value, Valley, people understand that this is a race that has those national consequences as well because you can have all the votes you want. If you don't actually have the power in D.C., nothing's going to happen. And you heard Congressman Harder say the word important several times there. That's definitely the word that a lot of people are using to talk about Congressional District 9. The supporters here for Tom Patty as well as Josh Harder's supporters. We, of course, are going to be checking all the election results as they continue to come in tonight and over the course of the next couple days. So, again, we will see, again, if this race, again, is one of those races that could determine the balance of power in Washington. But for now, reporting live in Stockton tonight for Commander. KCRA 3 News. Yeah, it's one of those on the radar, that's for sure, Orko. Thank you. Well, voters had a lot of decisions to make, including major issues. We want to walk you through some of the propositions, in fact, all of the propositions. Let's start with number one. This is the constitutional right to reproductive freedom, focusing on abortion rights. Uh, pretty decisive victory so far with 31% reporting, 61, 69 to 31%. Yeah, and then we go to Prop 26 right now. That is the one that would allow uh, sports betting on casinos. Uh, tribal casinos, tribal lands, and you can see this one going down to defeat as was expected according to many polls. And uh, there's another one, Prop 27, that also in the course of the campaign may have confused some uh, people. This one's the one that uh, allows uh, online sports betting. This one even going down by a larger margin. While we're holding on this graphic, Ashley, we've been watching these ads for the better part of a year now. Feels like two. <laughs> right? Those two. How yeah. much was spent on all this? Yeah, this is a the most expensive ballot fight between Prop 26, Prop 27, more than $500 million raised for and against these causes. And basically, they might have well just lit that money on fire because clearly, I mean, there was no outcome for either. And especially when the backers of Proposition 27, which which is corporate online sports gambling, FanDuel, DraftKings, Caesar Sportsbook. They're going to try again in 2024, and they've mm -hmm. already made that clear. So we could just see this same fight in two years. We've got another one of those coming up. But mm -hmm. first, we're going to go to Prop 28. There was really no opposition to this one, and we're seeing a looks like a, probably a pretty easy cruise to victory. This mandates that 1% of the Prop 98 funding, which is mm -hmm. uh, out of the budget going to public schools, go to arts and music education. So what? not a lot of controversy here. No. All right, let's check out uh, Prop 29 <laughs> and the... Uh, Contents of this prop probably sounds very familiar to you because this uh, has been run twice. It's failed twice. It would require uh, on-site medical professionals at dialysis clinics, and this one's going down to defeat uh, third times. Uh, something actually yeah I mean and so this this proposition is another confusing one for voters because it's billed to them as adding safeguards to kidney dialysis clinics opponents of this measure and let me sorry let me back up a little bit 
The supporters of this measure who want to add the rules to kidney dialysis clinics, it's actually the biggest healthcare union in California, the Service Employees International Union, United Healthcare Workforce. Yep. They are the major backers of this, and they have been in 2018, 2020, the, sim the measures that you mentioned earlier. Uh, and opponents of this, you know, the, the people who are able to get about 70% no so far, they note that this is really a ploy by that union to try to organize dialysis workers. They note this is not the way to do it, that this is sort of a bargaining chip uh, in this in this whole process um, but again that's that's the opponent's position on this and clearly it's just it's not sitting well with voters let's just go through how much was spent on this as well mm -hmm. this year 86 million dollars to defeat it in 2020 105 million dollars spent to defeat it in 2018 111 million dollars to defeat it do you think this is going to come up a fourth time I, I don't, I mean, why not, right? right. I mean, just like all the, <laughs> the sports betting measures are already uh, trying again, and uh, clearly, I mean, if you don't, if at first you don't succeed, why not try Throw again? more money at it. Yeah. Okay, let's walk, walk, walk through Proposition 30. Uh, this one looks like it's going down to defeat, and this is one of the ones that you've identified the governor as having a pretty big influence on. Mm -hmm, yeah, one of the stories of tonight is Governor Gavin Newsom's endorsements and how those have swayed voters, and it looks like he's had a lot of weight in this one as well. Proposition 30 is something where he and the Democratic Party were divided over. Every single delegate unanimously uh, voted to support this measure because, again, and, so, and uh, just to walk a few steps back, this measure incorporates a new tax on Californians making more than $2 million a year, a 1.75% increase to what they already have taken out. And that would that money would go toward helping California's electric vehicle infrastructure moving forward, at least over the next decade, as California looks to ban the sale of most gas-powered cars by 2035. Uh, and so Democrats were on board. This also helps with wildfire prevention, but Governor Gavin Newsom was a, uh, I mean, a stark opponent of this because Lyft, the rideshare company, uh, dropped so much money, $45 million on this proposition uh, to get it passed, and the governor called it a Trojan horse and basically said at this time, now is not the time economically to con to put more tax burdens on that tax bracket. All right, and the voters are following that, mm -hmm. that recommendation. All right, here's the uh, final one, the seventh proposition, Prop 31. Uh, this is the one that was basically a referendum on the 2020 law that would uh, ban flavored tobacco, certain flavored tobacco products. And uh, you can see this one is coming in with a, a big uh, win here so far, 65-35 with uh, about a third of uh, the ballot in. All right, let's check in now with a look at the national picture. No, I think we're gonna to go to Jason Marks, who's at the Sacramento County Elections Office. Jason, what are you seeing there? And Edie, you know, all elections cannot happen without poll workers like Grace Haney. Grace, hey. you've been dancing. Hi. You've been here since 6 a.m. I have. Why have you been here so long, other than you're getting paid to do it? It's not so much the money, because I'm retired with a pension. You look a day over so to 29? It's not about the money. It's like, these are good people to work for. Uh, certainly, I believe in voting. But to be here, and I'm, I'm a part of it, I'm making history. You are making it. How, how many elections have you done? This is my third one. Praise the Lord. Are you tired? 6 a.m. I am tired as hell. <laughs> <laughs> this is, you hear the music going on. This is the fun crew. Let me come around. Let me, yeah. This is the, this is the fun crew. They're, I think they're a little bit uh, sleep deprived. Uh, we're delirious. That's what we Kimberly are. Kimberly Mason, 6 a.m. Yes, 6 a.m. I've been here since 6 a.m. It is 10 18. How do you feel? Um, I don't know yet. I'm still trying to figure <laughs> it out. <laughs> Why are you here? I'm here for my kids. I want to know. I want them to let them know that voting is very important, and we need to vote. Talk about what you've been doing throughout the night. These are all being sorted, right? Or these are they were done, right? These are from the drop boxes. Yes, these are all drop boxes. So what we do is we sort them all out. Uh, we go through them, make sure there's signatures um, on the envelopes, and then um, once we figure out, make sure there are other counties. Uh, not inside of them, so we could get them on, sit them on to the right counties, and we weigh them, and we stand here and dance and party. And she's gonna hate me, but you said over here, you you said 16. You've been working 16 days straight. Yes, I've been working 16 days straight. When is your next day off? I don't have a day off until we're completely done. Oh Lord, that could be another month. 
Yes, I just choose to work. I have days off. I just choose to work. Are you a 6 a.m. too? Yes, here? I am. How tired are you? I'm not. You see how I look? Beautiful. <laughs> you do look beautiful. <laughs> we'll appreciate all the... Right now. What's, yeah. <laughs> Shirts are dirty. <laughs> We're tired. All right. Well, we appreciate the work that you're doing. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Yeah. Thank you. This is the party crew right here. We talked yes. about the party that was happening at the, the Democratic headquarters. Yes. Here's the party here, guys. We'll, we'll be back in a couple minutes with another live look at what's going on at Sac County headquarters. Now back to you. Uh,